Neil deGrasse Tyson. Most disaster movies begin with authorities ignoring scientists who warn off impending doom. Reality appears to be no different. So you're admitting that they script everything in my life to play out like a movie. You know we listened, right? It didn't fucking work. The curb didn't flatten. The paper mache thing that oh, Cuomo had. it flattened, had. Ryan. It flattened, all right. Because they didn't do Here's something. autopsies, the is, David. The problem they didn't is do autopsies. <laughs> well, that's part of it. The problem well, imagine is, telling somebody to look it up and it's not there anymore, Dave. Who who are you going to believe now? The books people don't believe books. They can't even. Sorry, dude. This is the, well, the the problem is, listen, Neil deGrasse Tyson, very smart, very scientific. Blah 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 blah. I don't even care. I, I don't care if the science is right. I don't. It's at what cost? Freedom, the most like the thing that allows science to happen. Oh, it's saved so many lives by locking people up. Yeah, probably. Well, the communists saved a is lot a, of lives. Is it a life? Other people. So here's what the scientists can answer: Is it a life worth living? You could lock everyone in their house; they'd never contract another virus again. Well, Dave, we'll just give Does them all their matter? necessities: money and food and all these other things. You—that's all you he, need to be happy. Neil deGrasse Tyson even admitted on the PBD podcast that, oh my God, when you locked all these people up, there was a mental health disorder spike. Whoa, that's crazy. But you don't care, do you? Because people didn't get the virus. Or was he paid to fucking say that? This is why you go watch Patrick Beck, goddamn David. The guy's a fucking billionaire. You think he's signing contracts? You think that guy's signing contracts for YouTube? No, he ain't going to sign one. I would love to know what he has to say about the Ben Shapiro beef. He's been very quiet about it. He mentioned it like very briefly on one episode. But yeah, I, I think because he's I, I bet, I bet that PBD has absolutely put a call in to Crowder. And Crowder does seem to have, I wouldn't say free time, because I'm sure there's a lot of shit happening behind the scenes, but I'm sure he could take a few hours of his time to go sit on the PVD podcast. What do you do? I know spoke earlier in the week about the Crowder thing. I know, but I meant to say this in that part of the, the show this week, but I'll say it now. We're in a constitution crisis. That's what we need. We always hear about crises with eggs. If eggs are eight dollars a fucking gallon, uh, eight dollars a gallon of eggs. If <laughs> eggs are expensive, milk is expensive. Is this, a, is this an official episode? Did we start? Fuck! Fuck the intro. I mean, they're great. they take it down anyways. If if all the stuff's <gasps> this expensive, I don't know when we started. If it's all this expensive, what's it even matter? You say all these things are crisis. What's a really crisis is a crisis of a constitution and of our government. We watched the death of the GOP in our lifetime. The party of Abraham Lincoln that freed slaves. What party takes its place, David? Bull Moose. It's making a comeback. I honestly think we just need to label it Americanism and... And because here's the thing we get, they did so good at labeling us, but they always told you to not be a label in school, right? You're a unique person, but you're a jock and a prep and a this. I was actually looking up the evolution of fuck boy today. And it used to be called douchebag when we were growing up, Dave, do you realize that now they're called fuck boys? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. But that's what I mean. When we come on here in this program, we talk, we talk about these things we've experienced. That's like I've always said. I've never included voting a single time in all of my stuff on beating the system. Not one time. I encourage people to vote because I believe in the idea of voting. But like the like you don't change people by voting other people. Like you have to change the people that vote for people's minds. It's crazy it to me that without Without trying to get another content strike on YouTube, it's crazy to me that they came after voting, and I'll leave that very vaguely, 
even though voting has such a minimal effect in real in real reality. Well, if I go to the polling place and there's only two people on the ballot, one's Republican, one's Democrat, is that voting? Or is that an illusion of choice? If I have three candidates, if I have 13 candidates, but what's realistic? How many are going to win? There can only be one winner. But out of 13, I mean, we've seen terms of service used. I wonder what they use during presidential debates to not get airtime for certain candidates to maybe boost some of their ratings, like a Ross Perot or a Ron Paul. I bet they use ads on Facebook. Say $50,000 worth or maybe, you know, much more than that. It's no coincidence that the true death of American freedom came in the GOP when the party is an elephant because the elephant is dying in the room we're in. It was suffocated by COVID policy. It was. It brought all the teeth to the surface in this liberty movement because it's not about liberty to these people. It's about capitalizing on your dollars and your emotions and your fears from the government and tyranny. Yeah, that's, really not what, that's not what we meant. We, the people, that's not what we meant when we said the government should probably run more like a business. We just meant, you know, don't go in debt all the time. The, 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 the real thing is the, the evil is inside of you. The tyranny is inside of you. You're the tyrant. You vote for tyrants. Because you're a tyrant. This is me too. Right? You got to look in where I told you guys about Napoleon Hill and um, conversation with the devil or whatever. Any negative space in your mind, the devil will occupy with demons. And that's what that shit is. Your fears. Your fears of not having this and that. Oh, government welfare. Do you know? This is just a scrap sheet of paper. You know that, Dave? We don't. I don't come on here with teleprompter. I don't come on here with notes. I've, I've read articles. Do you think any news anchors doing this? I know this appears unprofessional, but this is what this is. The reason they don't do this is because this is what works. And then this is the stuff they censor. Al Qaeda has murder videos on the internet that you can go watch. But you can't watch last week's episode when we talked about a doctor. She had different opinions than the World Health Organization, right? Well, the World Health Organization does not own YouTube, David, does it not? You well, know, it doesn't own it, but I'm sure, you know, as we've learned from the Twitter files, it was a big part of it. How I really actually wonder how that even became like a policy. Like, wh honestly, what power does the World Health Organization have over the Internet? What was the clause? Disinformation? That's not even the real thing. Disinformation was that the earth is the center of the universe. But it, but it, Brian, but this is the key driving point that people always miss though. It's not, well, it's that about that, the money, David. Well, no, no, no. It's not that that was disinformation. It's the fact that the thing that bothers me most is that that was science at one point. It was Get scientific. Galileo, and then he had to come and confess and say that he fucking made it up. And then he went in solitude because he was banished from his town and had to practice. And still did, because he knew he was right. I'm glad the government said he was wrong, Dave. That was disinformation. The, really government, the, gal the government told Galileo he was committing malinformation. Disinformation. And go full circle with it. They take the guy that was the leader of disinformation about the sun being the center of our, our, gal uh, of our galaxy here and all that. And then you use the ideas that he put in place to put satellites up in space to censor my information about it. You Everyone. shit all over. <laughs> you know, I thought of this this week. Do you guys realize, like, do you know why UFOs are popular, David? Like, do, why are Marvel movies popular? I like Lord of the Rings. Why is Harry Potter popular? Why does everybody have, oh, I'm a nerd about this thing. It's never been a thing before in human history. Name another time that humans had hobbies that it it, it was a cons like a re like a religion. Name a hobby. Our ancestors gave us God, and we killed God. Right, our ancestors during the World Wars. So this is what we're left with: UFOs. People think it's more it's more possible green men come and spy on me than a God created everything. Human life. 
With the, I'm hurt. I'm told I'm a cancer. Human, human. I I told you guys months ago that the human population is shrinking. Western governments need to worry about. It. And then I see fucking NBC News talking about the family sizes shrinking. And one of the reasons they quoted is people realize how expensive kids were. Expensive. It's an investment. You know why kids are expensive, David? It's the greatest thing you'll ever fucking spend money on. Oh, who would have thought? But go to go to college. Give the banks your money. That's better than sp spend a hundred grand on an education to be a fucking doctor that you're not gonna like because you're told by the World Health Organization to wear a mask that doesn't fucking work. But don't spend a hundred grand raising a human goddamn being. Family size shrinking. I wonder why. Maybe maybe they stop demonetizing people, David. Maybe people just they're just nobody's being monetized. We're not making monetizing people inside each other anymore. They won't even be called birth anymore. We call it monetization. I don't know where I was going with that because it's a. <laughs> <laughs> I just have things script because I see these different things in the, you know between the censorship and then I got turned around. Uh... Ryan's making the case for teleprompters right now. <laughs> I mean, literally, but. I mean, it's. <laughs> I don't use teleprompters. Where the fuck was I going with this? Oh, uh, I know. It where creates I was going. a real genuine feel, though, unlike a teleprompter. Okay, the modern family is shrinking, and it's expensive to have kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny how they co coin everything as modern when nothing's changed. We're the same people. What? Because I have a TV. I'm modern. I can't make a, people can't make a fire. We're saying we're modern. <laughs> you can't do. You can't even change like. You're tired. Modern people would be like all the stuff your ancestors could do plus today. We can't we we can't do that. Girls can barely cook. That's my misogyny for the week. That's weak misogyny. Um oh I'll get there. Oh um that's that's misogyny light. So the the um modern family shrinking stuff, it got me thinking about like I come from immigrant family just like everybody else in America. Do you realize you, we had child labor like a person and a half ago? We should we absolutely still we should still have it today. We had seven year olds. I did child labor. I went on job sites with my dad and vacuumed the carpet. They had authorized child labor day once a year. Do you remember yeah, this? Take your kid to work day. Take your kid to work. They had child labor. Um, yeah, it just reminded me of like when you hear immigrant stories. Like the whole point, it's never been, it's never been cheap to raise people. If you don't have money, you have to you have to go find bananas and risk your life. Sounds awfully expensive. I saw some someone said something to this point, and I know this isn't very specific, but it was like. Oh, they say t these days it take it's uh it's two hundred thousand dollars to raise a kid, but back blah 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 it was only fifty thousand dollars. I was like, yeah, that's because their money's worth less. Well, they just make money up, so just give it's them like a, a, it's a point that is totally lost on people all the time. So we should uh, murder so much everybody. More expensive now. Oh uh, yeah, it it's costs the same price. We just have worse money. What's unbelievable is even if it costs somebody one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to grow up, right? Even if you invest all that money. The amount of money that they can produce in their lifetime is more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Do you, like? Do you, we worry about the wrong stuff. I enjoy politics. Don't get me wrong, but at the, the Ben Shapiro thing really chaps my ass because I knew it. It is a house of cards. How long have we like? I even supported the guy. Birth rates falling. We had child labor and we had immigrants that literally died at work to build the world I walk on to worry about the genitals of children. We have no God. We killed God and we filled it with everything else. That's why we have these influencers. We have followers like a religion. It's the death of God like whatever fucking philosopher, psychology guy talked about. I seen that the climax activist uh, Greta Thurberg the other week got uh, down for a photo op 
on her knees. And no, she was, was arrested, so Ryan. She was, Haven't you ever been arrested on camera? It's very frequent. Well, her and AOC must have been there together. It's always convenient that when these people get arrested, there's cameras. You know, I was maybe, never on camera. Is Greta Thurberg like a vegan vegetarian or something? Or, or are we just assuming? Are we assuming her know. diet right now? I'd, I'd give her some meat. Yeah, I'm just saying, maybe if she ate meat, she wouldn't have Down syndrome. <laughs> That's probably from the vaccines, right? <laughs> Definitely jabbed more than once. They went back for repeated. Right. That's a joke, World Health Organization. Relax. It's so crazy. You used to just say YouTube. I was aiming too small. Here I, know, I thought I it was a private company, David, that had terms of use set by global entities of unelected bureaucrats. Yeah, we really need Sounds to that. We private. Used to, we, used to, we used to say it's a joke, YouTube, relax. But now we know. We really just got to take it right to the top dogs. The people really in charge of YouTube. I have so many books about this. I, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's bullshit. I don't even care about it. It's just funny. We have this Ryan's record to just keep track of these no liars if uh, the World Health Organization permits it. But yeah, there's a border Biden cri uh, border Biden crisis. Apparently, people are trying to blame Biden for not going down there. People are smuggling eggs over the border. The world's crazy. Or I'm at sorry. least what we're focusing on. Didn't we report on a story like a long, long time ago that Kamala was in charge of the border? Now, you remember that? Those were the yeah the political dishes to be washed, David. Yeah, like it was her job to go to the border, and then like she also didn't go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's almost mm -hmm. like they don't care about the border. Like they're the, the free voters, David. And hey, they're only flooding into Texas and Florida. <laughs> the, those red states, Texas could go blue this year. Oh, that's really? weird. I wonder why. It's almost like it's attached to Mexico. Huh. North Mexico, huh? It's a global well, policy. Go, why? To be, why to do they got Ryan? They flood into California too. So, you know, kind of throws your theory off. They are. It's just the political party we all need to be affiliated with is just Americanism now. It's we're done with conservative. We're done. We're done here. We're we're done. Americanism goes against globalism. That's why they're coming here. I know we know this. It's just crazy to see that they're smuggling fucking eggs over the border because they're so expensive. And I was told for months to not worry about nothing. And now I'm told to prepare for recession. There's no recession. There's no recession. There's no recession. It's like getting raped in the woods and being oh, told Republicans you're not overtook being the House. Oh, you better watch out for that recession. Recession. What to do in case of recession? What to do in case of recession? Like this rape. And people don't know. We're like, oh my God, save me. I don't say it, but. They'll save me, all right, David. Trump's back on Facebook and IG. I cannot wait to not see him on there because I don't think he's coming back. They can unban him and all that stuff, but they unban him on Twitter. It doesn't forever, matter. Though. He hasn't. It doesn't. He hasn't tweeted yet. You can find him yeah, on Truth. Why would you go back? Why? This is like taking an X back. Why would you go back to the garbage that you threw out already? You would go back. I don't need at truth. least once oh. or twice. In my experience, you go back at least once or twice. You just. At least a couple tweets. This is well, maybe quick, Trump's got... Just be like, ah, you know what? I Yeah, I didn't really like tweeting that much. Yeah, but Trump's got... Has always had I'll try it again pieces. in three months. We'll I mean, see how I feel Storm about it. Yeah, but Stormy is... <laughs> Trump's always had side pieces, so he doesn't need Facebook. <laughs> I'm not getting into bed with Zuckerberg. Smells like Google. He's terrible in bed. He's terrible in bed. He always wants to put a black bar over my eyes. Um... December Tainment this week. I got a couple. Oh, did you hear about the uh, Stephen Crowder Daily Wired thing that's going on? That's good December Tainment. Yeah, it's perfect December Tainment to distract from a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. December Tainment this week. David, do you think uh, Josh Allen is going to suffer from the effect of getting drafted to a team that's not up to the caliber of player he is? And then he's going to no. play like shit? No. You think they'll build around him? Yep. All right. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to <laughs> I'm gonna say. Greatest goddamn quarterback ever. You can't get a guy to stop a grown man in front of him. Josh Allen stiff-arming a defender. He shouldn't – whatever. All, I'm going to say one thing. If it's third and two, don't Keep throw the ball. Bitch 80 yards. Don't throw the ball more than five yards. What is I'm so hard say, about 
Here's what I'm going to say. I play throws, fucking. I barely a, play Madden, and I know that. Here's what I'll say. That throw is a lot easier to make when you know you're uh, not outside in a blizzard. Just saying. No, it's fine. Build a new stadium right next door with no roof. Also, that's a worth a few billion dollars. At least we're not paying for it. <laughs> well, the NFL is going to. Well, we should build do it down. Why we isn't build... the NFL in on this? That's that's a story for a different day. It's a multi-billion dollar company, and they're the team's owned by multi-billionaires. And who's paying for the stadium? And the World Health Organization, that's I'm right. sure. Which is why they had to have COVID bracelets like fucking Jews. Like the Jews, David! World Health Organization runs football, people. Um, okay, Bills. And then one other thing before my true December team this week. David Goggins. I've heard that name from you before. Animal. Fucking animal. Guy shouldn't be alive, but somehow he is. So we all got we got work to do, people. Anyways, I'm not here to be a motivational speaker. He is, which is why you should listen to him on Chris Williamson's podcast. Okay? And I'm only bringing this up because if you like Goggins or anything like that or just like that, honestly, the mentality – mentality we need to deal with the shit that we're we're facing on the fronts of health and wealth and social media and the inputs from the outer world sensor medic right like all these things to be a healthy complete person we need that now more than ever because we need strong men which is why you should listen to this podcast it's the last podcast he's doing for like four years or something he's basically going off grid so like everything you're going to see of david goggins is going to be like recycled content for the foreseeable future um because he doesn't like to be plugged in and all that it's just very interesting that like um even a guy with wealth and all this stuff and access to fame and can still step away it's like stoicism to a fault you know like marcus mm -hmm. aurelius stuff like highly noble and um it's interesting so that was cool i listened to some of that this week obviously uh, i came on this program told you guys about chris williamson i really like him i follow his religion on YouTube. And, um, he always has like, not balance. I'm not saying that because he's very, he does like opinion journalism, you know, ask questions, interesting topics, things that he's interested in. He studies, which is why you guys should tune into him as uh, one of your sources. And then, uh, my true to sever of this week. So, you know, David, you know, I take care of myself, you know, and I've been accused of being, you know, in my twenties cause I'm super, uh, you know, I thought, gonna, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna say homosexual. Well, that too. I definitely. I, hey, do you like getting pegged? <laughs> um, or imagine if I said that to a girl. You like anal? That's usually how I start off the conversation. It always works. Works every time. <sighs> Never. Don't ask a fish how to catch a fish. Hey, right? does, does this? Does this? Does this smell like chloroform? Oh, <laughs> well, I know what I did last night. What? Ah, uh, rape jokes. Always the best. Grape. Grapes. Grapes of Wrath. Oh, you're not supposed to say that on YouTube, right? World Health Organization. The World Health Organization. They're greatly against rape. Dude, this is how this is how you know shit's fucked up. YouTube, right, which is owned by Google, gets information from the World Health Organization. But it's a private company. That's right. Moving on. So, so anyways, you're homosexual. Go on. My homosexual adventure. I downloaded Grinder, excuse me, Tinder, <laughs> the other day, and um, I haven't been on in a while. I'm not like expecting anything. I just thought it'd be kind of funny. Um, now that cuffing season's over, I can start trying to date women because I don't want. Uh, not saying women use you, but look, nobody wants to be fucking alone for the holidays. Ryan, no. literally, literally, like two weeks from now. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm on the like, cuffing oh, season. It's dude. It's cuffing season right now. No, well, until Valentine's Day, February fifteenth. Fourteenth, my friend. Fourteenth. I know, but fifteenth is when you get on. No, you don't. You, you don't no, get on before. No, no, no. You grease the skids now because it takes about like a week or two. It takes about thirty seconds. They're whores. Not all of them, David. There is a lot of fat well, chicks on you, Tinder. You, Holy shit! I don't know. I looked up a number. Okay, I've heard all the statistics. I've spent I come on and tell you guys this, right? Like all the this stuff in the guy space I spent time with because I'm trying to understand women. 
because I'm trying to find girlfriend. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to be a healthy guy. I I'll, te I'll teach you someday, Ryan. I'll teach you. Oh, geez. I don't need help getting laid. That's not the thing. That's not what I said. You like anal? Um, Tinder? Where was it? Oh, there's a lot. So I looked up like men swipe on 50% of profiles. Right? It's, it's that low. Dude, that's high. Girls swipe on no, like 2% of profiles. No, but I thought it'd be 100 for a man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just, well, that's, that's where I'm going. Fuck shot, dude. It's fuck shot. Who no? Who's swiping? No bird shot. Sorry, it's bird shot. Oh, there's it's whales. Bird shot approach. It's an aquarium of whales on Tinder. Yeah, but dude, or I just blew through all the hot chicks, or I've swiped left, right on all the hot chicks. Is there an Actually, algorithm? So I didn't. <laughs> I never removed my Tinder. I didn't know this till recently. Okay. Tinder has like an IP address equivalent. I'm, this is loosely layman's terms. World That's Health why Organization. I use VPN when I'm on Tinder. Oh fuck that fucking guy! That little hat of yours. Then I'll tell you. <laughs> it's like beep on here. I'm gonna go down there with my family's babushka. We're gonna have a fucking hat battle. <laughs> I love getting you totally off track. Anyway, Tinder oh, IP address. World. My sister tells me I have ADHD. She's definitely wrong. So. Everyone should know that I have gold. Okay. You don't pay for Tinder because it lowers. They have their own algorithm, right? And you're fed into the system. They'll, if you don't delete your Tinder or like your actual profile, remove it, the older it is, the more it's been in the algorithm. So like all these little things matter if you fill your profile out, right? So obviously these people that get paid to do this make everything super dorky and analytical so that they can sh Fine. I don't hate that. But I heard a thing that you got to increase your standards in life. And one way you do that is when you're on dating apps, you only swipe on the girls that you really, really think are either attractive or you really think you're going to like. So when I've been swiping, I've been like psychologically analyzing myself because it's weird to like flip through people like a fucking picture book. And you don't even know these people. Your chances of matching with them are low because women swipe on low amounts of guys. Which is why they tell you if you're not a certain level of man to not even bother online. This is all drawn out because there's a lot of things to it, okay? It's already complicated enough. You have to fucking take pictures if you want to be successful, right? And I'm just doing this over time. I'm picking the pictures. I'm doing the whole nine yards, right? And it gets to this thing about attachment style, okay? And I'll actually just pull up the um, list because it's... um. Panoramic, so my whole dong fits. Uh, maybe it's not attachment. So I think it was personality trait is what they labeled it as. Let me look. Excuse me. Hold on a second. Personality type. You ready? Mm -hmm. INTJ. INTP. ENTJ. ENTP. INFJ. INFP. Right, those e are letters. No, these are personality types, traits, David. The fuck's an ENFJ? Well, it's funny you asked, David. I don't know. I had to go. This is what I. This is this is what I'm saying. This is the world's crazy. This is crazy. It shouldn't be this hard. It's not supposed to be this hard, people. We focus on the wrong stuff. Here I am swiping on Tinder trying to get laid, but I had to go online to look up a Washington Post article on what the fuck is going on with personality types on Tinder. And then I got like two scrolls on the screen before I realized I just don't care about your personality type. And also, you don't even know what that means. All these girls on the other side of their phone are like, oh my God. And then they go on the internet and like, yeah, that's definitely me. Click. That's definitely me. Click. And they don't know. They're not a psychologist. We got Tinder out here psychologizing people. And then they're moving on into the world trying to find relationships. I'm kind of surprised on Tinder they don't just use the fucking... Uh, oh, he's a Libra. You know what that means? Oh, that it bullshit's is. It's called astrology. That's what it is. It, it is. I put it on there because Libras are balanced, David. We're all about the balance. I need some guy to balance me out. Oh, I'll balance you out, baby. You and that climax activist. Be banging you over a kitchen stove. Slammed. Slam, get sorry. slammed for your views. We get slammed frequently on here, by the way. Very frequently. We get slammed by the World Health Organization every time we post a video. I fuck, it's unbelievable. I, I would say I never would believe it, but here we are. You know, we knew it was coming. Orwell was right, even though he was a commie too. 
yeah, Tinder, it's a good time. I'm kind of enjoying it. And um, yeah, it, it made me realize you got to look at life different, right? And not because I'm trying to be superficial, but it's weird to try to distill your life into like, like a, like a resume. I, I don't know. Like a resume. It's like a resume, like a, a portfolio rather. I don't, I don't know how much I could trust Tinder. There's blue checks, Dave, so that must be true. You could just buy those on Twitter. It's eight dollars a month. Well I don't want to show up and some guy named Steve is there. Well, you can select trans, David. Oh, I have swept uh, th the problem is is there is trans on there and they don't even tell you. Well that's fucked and you'll up. You'll be looking at well, you'll look at it and then like I mean you'll know ninety five percent of the time, but Yeah, especially in person. That's crazy. Uh, they they make you do all these pronouns and stuff, but if it's tranny, you, that should be legal. You should have to legally require to tell me that on Tinder. And this is like the thing, right? This back to the Americanism. I actually heard like a theory on makeup and stuff, and like because of trans, well, let's be honest, guys being girls, women like men are going to start finding natural beauty more attractive because it's the only way we're going to know that you're really a woman is if you have no makeup on or, and your hair is messy and you're in like we're going to have to basically see. Yeah, like literally we're going to have to see women at like the grossest version of themselves to be sure that they're women, which makes dating interesting. I mean, birth rates are falling, right? But there's going to be single women everywhere. I like, I have sisters. I have a mother and daughter. Like I don't want single women because if they're single women, there's single men out there and men rape women. Right. And then we just keep feeding this. You go on to it, it dude. Nobody knows what any of that means, and we're trying to develop connections on it. Now, granted, it's just a superficial way to, to get to home base, to meet somebody. But I'm so busy. I can't go to the bar. The bar is a terrible place to meet people. Go to the well, bookstore. I go to the place. shopping center. I hit on girl. Like, it's not that I'm not out there, but it's like, how else am I going to meet people? You know, and we're all confined in these little boxes. So I guess it's just a long way for me to say is, if I get a Tinder date and it is a hell of a story, I will definitely share it here on Ryan's record. Dave, Ryan, <laughs> Cyber seventeen seventy three. Be here every day, Monday through Friday, seven p.m. Eastern. Catch me and Dave here as long as the World Health Organization permits. We should get one of those uh, stickers that says uh, "World Health Organization approved." Yeah, it's I'll not. be there. Dave will be there until we're self deleted. Catch you guys then. Thank you, David, as always. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Four bills. <laughs>